the geopolitics of fossil fuel decarbonization are fundamentally different from those of uh, metallic substances. And there's several reasons. The first is that unlike critical minerals, in the oil, gas, and coal production space, you have a near level playing field in that. There is no one region that dominates. There is no one country that dominates. The second thing is that we're in in minerals, we are looking at different types of substances. In the hydrocarbon space, really, we are really only looking at coal, oil and gas. The result is that the geographic spread, the geographic distribution is also much wider and more diverse. True, there are countries like Saudi Arabia that dominate, but still, the balance of power is pretty healthy. And so my sense is that as we move forward with decarbonization, the geopolitics will be slightly different and the dynamic much different. Here is something else. We're in, for a long time, coal has been fundamentally excluded you are now seeing that the voices of countries like India is rising to defend coal, such that coal is not the victim child of decarbonization through reduction of consumption of fossil fuels. The recent developments in the conflict between Russia and Ukraine have also thrown a spanner in the work. For whatever reason, Europe has suddenly woken up that actually, not only is Europe dependent on Russia for much of its gas, but that actually Europe is dependent on gas for its heating period, regardless of where it comes from. And so, contrary to prior thinking in which Europe was flirting with the idea of treating gas the same way as oil in terms of the speed at which we seize production of these resources. Europe has now woken up to the fact that actually gas is part of the transition solution. Geopolitical, what that means is that depending on whether or not a country is well endowed with gas or oil, economically the impact of decarbonization will be different, at least in the short term. For countries in Africa, like Mozambique, Tanzania, Ethiopia, and for that matter, Senegal, that have recently made significant discoveries of uh, oil. This is good news. But let's be clear. Europe has said it's a transition. It doesn't say it's a permanent solution. What that means is that for these countries, there is a window of opportunity, and that that window of opportunity must be seized or be lost in perpetuity. Here is something else about the geopolitics of decarbonization. Because of the revenue from oil, because of the number of state-owned entities that produce oil, the role of government in determining the pace at which the world will be decarbonized, I suspect, will be greater. In this particular instance, my sense is that producers of oil will have a much stronger voice in what happens to oil and at what pace we move away from oil than would otherwise be the case. Having said that, to the extent that these countries need finance to develop these resources, unless countries wake up and wake up very quickly and manage state-owned enterprises better in countries like Algeria, in countries like Venezuela, in countries like Angola, in countries like Nigeria for that matter, they too run the risk that despite wanting to press on with development of oil, the absence of revenue may well render those assets and those uh, state-owned entities redundant. That, I think, are some of the aspects of the geopolitics of fossil fuels. They differ fundamentally from those of solid minerals.